Okay, good evening. I'm Dr. Prem Gimali. I'm a urologist and kidney transplant surgeon. And currently, I'm an assistant dean in the Institute of Medicine, Maharajans, Kathmandu, Nepal. I would like to thank the organizing team for inviting me to talk on the topic of thulium fiber laser versus albumin laser. I don't have any conflict of interest while presenting this topic. While doing the urinary stone management, we, are, we have four aims. First of all, we want to dust the stone in the smallest particle that it could be flushed out easily. We want to complete the procedure as soon as possible. We want the first procedure. We want the less complication related to the procedure and we want the procedure should be cost effective. Success of endurological intervention depends on the size of the instruments and delivered energy for ablation of the tissue or fragmentation, fragmentation of the stone. I think in this forum, there must be senior urologists who used to work in 1990s. At that time, we used to use 12 French ureteroscope. You can imagine 12 French ureteroscope to deliver through the Asian ureter, how much damage we had caused. And we used to have an electrohydraulic lithotripsy to break the stone. There are four sources of energy used for the disintegration of the stone. In the beginning, we used to use electrohydraulic lithotripsy. Here, the probe is flexible, but it is sparks at, it, at its end, and that is spark breaks the stone. But the sparking was not focused. It is not... Uh, collided and the scattered energy can injure the surrounding tissue also. Nowadays, electrohydraulic lithotripsy is absolute. I don't think anybody uses it anymore. Ultrasonic lithotripsy. It is a good uh, source of energy, but the probe is rigid. So we cannot introduce this probe through the flexible spots. Similarly, pneumatic. In many Developing countries, pneumatic lithotripsy are mainly used for the PCNA or ureteric stone as well as the bladder stones. But again, here the probes are rigid, we cannot introduce through the flexible ureteroscope. And nowadays, the very versatile, flexible, focus energy comes from the laser, but at the cost. So, Holmium laser is now a gold standard energy source for the uh, management of the urolithiasis. It is not a very young method. In 1992, Johnson has published the first paper about the use of volumum yag laser in the urolithiasis. In 2018, Russian urologist Martinov published a paper about the thulium fiber laser, which was introduced in market just four years ago. And it is very much promising and it is uh, aggressively entered the urology. Let's talk about the volume and tholium. Volume and tholium were discovered by Paul Theodor Kleib, who is the Swedish metallurgist, in 1879. Both these, those elements are rare earth element. Volume and tholium, they fall in the lanthanum group of the element uh, table or periodic table where the atomic weight of the volume is 67 and atomic weight of the thulium is 69. Theodore Kleb named the volume because in Latin word, volume means the stockholm. Definitely, it is not wondering that Theodore Kleb is named for the capital of his country, Stockholm. Later, it became volume. And he again named the thulium as a thule in Greek word, Thule means Scandinavia. So Scandinavian countries are the countries in the north of Europe. Later it becomes Thule. Both those lanthanum group of the elements are rare in the earth element. Uh, they have a very high density, 9.8 gram per cubic centimeter. Its melting point is 800 to 1600 degrees Celsius and boiling point is uh, six, uh, 1200 to 3500 degrees Celsius. Volumim is used in the atomic stations to break the uh, atomic chain reaction, and thulium is used for the production of the laser. 
Let's compare the characteristic of those volume and folium. Volume has the wavelength of 2,100 nanometer and nearby is the tholium fiber laser. It is 1,940 nanometer. Both are infrared light, so human naked eye cannot see the uh, volume and tholium. That's why we use the pilot light while using those laser. Uh, pulse energy range in a volume and laser, it ranges from 0 0.2 to 6 joule. But in thulium fiber laser, it ranges from 0 0.025 to 6 joule. Pulse duration of the volume laser is 0 0.5 to 1 millisecond, while in thulium fiber laser, it is 0 0.05 to 12 millisecond. It means the duration is longer. Maximum frequency after adding the small multiple machines, volume laser can reach up to the 80 hertz, while the thulium fiber laser frequency is 2000 hertz. Laser fiber, we cannot make the laser fiber in volume laser, uh, volume AIG laser smaller than the 200 micron because we cannot deliver the volume laser in the smaller fibers, but the thulium fiber laser is smaller is 50 micron. Actually 50 micron uh, fiber is not available in medical use. They are used in the laboratory. In medical use, we have 150 micron fiber. Cooling system in uh, high power uh, volume AIG laser is a refrigerator, while in thulium fiber laser, it's just a simple fan. I will come later why the refrigerator is required. Resistance to external shock for the machine in volume AIG laser is very low. Small uh, shock on the machine can damage the machine, whole machine. But in thulium fiber laser, resistance is very high. So let's talk about the volume AIG laser. Volume AIG laser is created in a closed box. Closed box, it means this box, which is opaque. And in the two ends of the box, there are mirror. And in the center of the box, uh, clear crystal with the yttrium, aluminum, and garnet is placed, which is blocked with the volume. And from the one end of the box, the flashlight in the form of genon or krypton is sparked and it stimulates the volume and it uh, generates the laser. And this laser goes to the, toward the mirror. This mirror reflects the, this laser and goes back to the another mirror. And this circle continues. But only a small fraction of this laser comes out from this aperture. And most of the, this laser remains inside the box and box gets heated. And this laser is, uh, uh, this machine is attached with the surgical fiber. Uh, in volume, it is, smallest is 200 micron and through this micron the energy is delivered to the tissue or the stone. In volume laser, we cannot change the energy. The energy is 0 0.2 to 6. You cannot decrease the energy in volume. You cannot change the pulse duration of the volume, whatever the procedure you do, you cannot change it. We can change only the frequency. So if we collect four machines with the 30 watt volume measure, it becomes 120 watts. It doesn't change the power. Uh, it doesn't change the energy. It doesn't change the uh, pulse duration, but it only changes the frequency. What is the thulium fiber, uh, thulium fiber laser? Thulium fiber laser is a simple box. Inside that box, there is 10 to 30 meter long silicon fiber. And this silicon fiber, in the middle of the silicon fiber, there is the hollow area, which is docked with a thulium. And this thulium is stimulated with a diode laser. And the inner uh, thulium fiber laser is generated, which passes through this fiber, it doesn't come out. It passes, all the energy passes through the fiber and it comes to the aperture of the box, which is attached with surgical fiber. And through this surgical fiber, all energy goes to the targeted tissue or a stone. So once there is no energy left inside, the machine doesn't get hit. Once the energy reaches to the tip of the surgical fiber, it creates a bubble. And in the thulium fiber level, uh, laser, 
it forms a bubble and the bubble collapses, it breaks the stone. Once it collapses, there is the Moses, that is the uh, free area. And again, the second wave of the bubble is generated. And this is a very powerful to break the stone. At the end, well, maybe yeah, glacier mission seems like this because it gets heated. If somebody is using aluminum laser, they must have heard the noise of the machine because of the heated boxes inside. To cool the machine, you need the refrigerator. So it contains the refrigerator. So the machine is quite big. In thulium fiber laser, there is nothing. It is just a box and a monitor. And the maintenance cost of this machine is almost near to zero. Only you need to change your fiber. It is very much portable. You can carry from one room to another room. You can keep this machine in your car and bring to the another hospital and just connect with the ordinary uh, wall socket and you can use it. But for the whole Mamiya glacier, you need three phases electricity. You cannot move from one place to another place. That while moving this machine, the alignment of the mirror and the crystal can be changed, which damages the machine. So, for the disintegration or dusting of the stone, we need three parameters. One is energy, another is frequency, another is the pulse duration. Let's talk about the energy. Energy is passed from the machine through the fiber to the targeted tissue or organ. We pass those, this energy in the, uh, from the different size of the uh, fibers. 150 micron uh, fiber is available only with the TFL and 200 and above are found in the volume region. Let's see the energy density. What is the energy density? If we, for example, if we deliver one joule energy through the 270 micron fiber, the energy density in that fiber is 17 joule per square millimeter. It means one joule when passes through 270 micron fiber, uh, the density is 17 joule per square millimeter. If the same energy, one joule, we pass through the 150 micron fiber, which is available with the thulium fiber ledger, the energy density is 56 joule, which is 3.3 times higher than the um, well, yeah, uh, in the uh, 270 micron fiber. So if we want 70 joule in our 150 micron fiber, then we need to decrease the energy supplied through that fiber. Instead of one joule, we should pass only 0.3 joule. And it gives the equal amount of density in the fiber. The pulse duration, it is the duration when the energy contact of the energy and the targeted tissue organ is the pulse duration. In volume, it is only 0.05 to 1 millisecond, while in thulium fiber laser, it is from 0.05 to 12 millisecond. Longer the contact, the ablation is faster. Absorption. The coefficient of absorption with a thulium fiber laser is four times higher than the volume layer laser. So in context of the safety of the laser with the thulium fiber laser, it's quite good with the thulium fiber laser. Talking about the retropulsion of the stone, whatever the energy we use, whatever the fiber we use, if we compare with the volume and Yag laser, the retropulsion with the thulium fiber laser is two times less than the volume Yag laser. I would like to suggest to uh, focus on this table, the distance between optical fiber and the stone. If we contact the fiber with the stone, the ablation of volume speed is 0.09 cubic millimeter per second in thulium. While with the volume of laser, the ablation volume rate is 0.02, which is four times faster than the volume. If we bring the fiber 0.2 millimeter away from the targeted stone, the ablation rate is 0.1 with the volume uh, thulium fiber laser, while it is only 0 0.02 with the volume of laser. And it is also 4.7 times faster than the 
one millimeter laser. If we talk about the distance of one millimeter, the fiber is one millimeter away from the stone, the ablation rate in thulium fiber laser is 0 0.07 cubic millimeter per second, while in volumetric mimic laser, it is 0 0.03. It is also 2.5 times faster than the volumetric mimic laser. So what are the limitations of the volume? The volume doesn't make the uh, uh, particles thinner as we want. It, its uh, dust is bigger than the dust made by the thulium fiber laser. And just in previous slide, I showed the time of ablation with volumen is two to three by uh, three times slower than with the thulium fiber laser. So this is the thulium fiber laser and all those limitations are solved with the thulium fiber laser. So at the last, I want to uh, compare the characteristic here. It, the slide was shown previously also. The pulse energy range, the difference is quite high with the thulium and the pulse duration is maximum is one millisecond in volume group, while it is 12 millisecond in thulium fiber group. The frequency rate in high power volume laser is 80 hertz, while in thulium fiber laser, it is 2000 hertz. And the diameter of the fiber in volume cannot come less than 200 micron, but in thulium fiber laser, 50 micron fiber is available. Cooling system of whole or refrigerator is required to cool the machine in volume laser. Simple fan is sufficient for the thulium fiber laser. And extra, resistant to external shock is low with the volume laser and it is high with the thulium fiber laser. So the properties of thulium fiber laser, the power goes up to the 500 watt, which we do not need to disintegrate the stone. The weight of the machine is just 30 kilogram, while the machine with high power old memory laser is 250 around. You can use just the standard power outlet, just the circuit in your uh, room wall is sufficient for the thulium fiber laser, while you need the three phase electricity for the whole memory laser. Air cooling system in the whole memory laser, you need refrigerator, but in thulium fiber laser, you need just a simple fan. The source of stimulation of the uh, volume or thulium um, in the uh, crystal, the flashlight in the form of genome or krypton is required in the volume laser. And just a diode source of the light is sufficient to stimulate the thulium. The pulse width is already mentioned. It is one millisecond in laser, it is 12 millisecond in thulium fiber laser. The frequency in Holmemiag laser is active hertz, but in thulium fiber laser, it goes up to the 2000 hertz. And pulse energy is also 0 0.025 to 6 joule in thulium fiber laser, where it is 0 0.2 to 6 joule in Holmemiag laser. So the advantages and disadvantages of the TFL. TFL is simple cooling system. The fibers are smaller. Once the fibers are smaller, irrigation is better and visibility is better. Retropulsion is two times lesser than in the whole memory laser. The absorption rate is four times higher with the thulium fiber laser in comparison with the whole memory laser. You can treat any type of the stone with the thulium fiber laser even the potentially large stone because the time is shorter than in volume mimic laser, so you can use TFL and bigger size of the stone. The frequency rate is high, low P possible. Minimal collateral tissue damage because the absorption is higher and the time is shorter. But the disadvantage is it that Thulium fiber laser is just introduced four years ago in the market. We don't have the long clinical study. The cost efficiency is not known, but we know that the maintenance cost of the machine is significantly low in comparison with the volume of laser. And optimal setting is not established. It is already established. The high frequency and low uh, energy as well as the long pulse is required for the 
stone uh, disintegration. And if you want to ablate the uh, tissue, similar type of uh, um, setting is needed. So our aim, while well, starting this uh, talk, I talk about the, our aim for the urinary stone. Our aim is to make the dust, the smallest dust of the stone, which is possible with thulium fiber laser. We want to complete the procedure as soon as possible, the quick procedure, which is possible with the thulium fiber laser. We want the less complication rate because of the tissue damage by the laser, it is possible with thulium fiber laser. And cost effective, the maintenance cost is minimum in the thulium fiber laser, so it is more cost effective. So the thulium fiber laser is better for urinary stone management. I acknowledge Oliver Traxer. I have taken a few slides from his presentation and I have taken some uh, literature or um, quotation from the article published by the Oliver Traxer in 2020. Thank you very much.